It now gives me great pleasure to introduce today's guest speaker. Brett Hooker is recognized as one of Australia's leading IT professionals with more than 20 years of national and international experiences. As the director for research and development at the Brisbane-based software firm Technology One, Brett Hooker delivers up-to-date business solutions for organizations around the globe and is responsible for the redevelopment of Technology One's applications for the delivery on the cloud. Prior to joining Technology One, Brett Hooker founded two startups and worked at Oracle Corporation, one of the largest IT companies in the world. During his 12 years at Oracle, working in both Australia and the United States, Brett worked his way up to the position of Senior Director of Applications Development. Brett holds a Bachelor of Business degree from QUT. In 2000, he received an outstanding alumnus award from QUT in recognition of exceptional professional achievements and contributions to the community. Seven years later, in 2007, he received the National Percy Young Achiever Award for IT innovation and contribution to the IT industry. Brett Hooker chaired the QT Alumni Board for many years. In 2011, received the Alumnus Service Award from QT. Brett Hooker is adjunct professor at our university and member of our faculty academic board. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Brett Hooker. Chancellor Tim Fairfax, Acting Vice-Chancellor Professor Peter Little, other members of the official party, graduates, ladies and gentlemen. It's with great honour that uh, I accept this invitation to speak tonight on behalf of the university and to share this stage with so many high quality graduates. I too sat in one of those chairs, I guess a few too many years ago now. Um, about 23 years ago I graduated from QT with my first degree. Um, and it's uh, with a warm heart that I actually see some familiar faces in the front of the audience here too who pushed me through my degree and showed me the things that could be achieved through the work that we do. I'd like to do a couple of things tonight. I understand that I am actually literally standing between yourselves and your families for the rest of the evening. But I wanted to share with you a little of my story um, so you can understand the sorts of things that QUT graduates do as they go through their career. Hopefully I'm only about halfway through my working career. We'll see how that, we'll see how that works out. But I'd like to share a little bit of that story. I'd also like to share a little bit of what's happening um, particularly in my industry, but it blends with the work that we've done across all of the degrees that we've celebrated this evening. Discuss a couple of opportunities that lie ahead for us um, and leave you with a challenge. But let me start with my story. As I said, I graduated from QUT in, in 1990 with a Bachelor of Business Computing. I'm just a brizzy boy. I just grew up in the eastern suburbs um, from a modest family. Didn't exactly know how I was ever going to get overseas. Um, but I took my degree and I worked for a, uh, a, 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 um, a Brisbane-based organisation and built my skills. And within a couple of years, I actually joined a little software company called Oracle. And uh, somebody chuckled. Um, I joined that company in 1993 here in Australia and I flew around Australia and Papua New Guinea building software for organisations. And uh, word got back to Oracle HQ of some of the things that I'd been doing down here. And they invited me to come to Silicon Valley um, on an internal company visa in 1995. 1995 wasn't a bad time to turn up in Silicon Valley. Um, the Netscape browser had only been invented about a year earlier. Um, and uh, people like Larry Ellison, the founder of Oracle, were still calling the internet the information superhighway. I'm a business software guy. I've spent all my life building software for large organisations. I joined the applications division within Oracle, which is the business software part of that organisation. When I joined that team, um, in '95, there were 500 people in that development organisation, so 500 of us writing software. In the five years that I spent in Silicon Valley between there and, and 2000, that organisation grew from 500 people to 5,000 people. We went from 32 products to 232, 230 products on the back of both the Y2K changes and the, uh, and the dot-com boom. That was a great opportunity for me. I learned how to build international software, how to build teams. Um, at the peak of that, in 2000, I was running a 200-person R&D organisation in Silicon Valley, so you can imagine what that would have felt like. Um, in 2000, that was the time of uh, 
uh, our Premier Peter Beatty in the Smart State, uh, at the Smart State programs. And Peter Beatty actually came over and visited us at uh, Oracle HQ and sat down with myself and Larry Ellison and talked about the opportunities that exist for a company like Oracle in, in tapping into the graduates from Australia and in particular Brisbane. And the result of that meeting was we actually established an R&D centre for Oracle right here in Brisbane. And to this day, that organisation still uh, employs uh, local graduates um, and is of, of, quite, of, uh, of quite a size. Um, beyond that, I actually, I guess one of my highlights, um, I'm, I, you know, I don't know if you'll know, but um, I'm a bit of an introvert, you know, I'm a, software, I'm a software developer by trade, so a little bit of an introvert, I learned how to do things like this. Um, but one of the greatest uh, presentations I ever gave in my time at Oracle was at a, uh, at a conference in Hawaii where I presented the software that I'd written to 3,500 people. Right, so that, that may be very well sitting ahead for you as well. Um, I left Oracle to try uh, startups. I had, a good, I had a good crack at the startup thing, but I really missed enterprise software and the difference we could make with, with software in big business. So I actually returned to a local uh, headquartered software company called Technology One, and I work for them now. And in the introduction, you heard some of the things that I do there. That's a little bit about my story, but let's talk about what's coming next, because I'm, I'm so excited about the industry that all of you are moving into. Right. I guess some of the big things that are spoken about in, in information technology at the moment are things like cloud and mobile computing devices like these phones. Right? But what's coming next as a result of uh, the miniaturisation of technology um, and sort of the blending of being able to be connected at all, at all times, uh, to be able to bring location information, um, hardware and software all together on miniature devices is really going to take off in the next 10 years. And as I think about for many of you, as you learn your craft in your different disciplines, you're going to be able to participate in that, ju that journey. And what we're, what we're seeing more than ever is a blurring of the lines between hardware and software, right? We're able to build... Um, one, of the things I, one of the things that I see in, in the market today are little, wrists, uh, little uh, wrist bracelets. I don't know if you've seen them, but they're little fit, fit um, bracelets that you can wear that keeps track of your movements and things like that. And, and fundamentally, at its core, they're, they've got a whole computer inside those things. They've got memory and, and, um, and acceler accelerometers and things like that, and it brings together software. And what we're seeing is is the birth of a thing that's called the Internet of Things, where all the things that we use in our life are all connected to each other and can share information. I'll give you an example of some of the things that are really changing. There's a, a, a product from Google called Google Glass, which is a set of glasses that you wear that has a little tiny screen up over the corner of your eye. It's, it's quite unobtrusive, but that screen can show information. And you can take a look at some of the applications that are already being built there. And there's, there's some fun ones, like cyclists can use it to keep track of what they're doing with cycling. But where it gets really interesting is in business, if we could have information right there at the point of looking at something or doing something, to be able to consume the information we need to do a better job is going to be quite enabling in the commercial sector. Another example is a little car company in Silicon Valley called Tesla. Right, and they're fundamentally rewriting the way that people build cars. The core systems within this car are all connected together in one system like an enterprise software system would be, and all the software is all built to work together. And they can actually update the car just like you update your phone. You can actually download a firmware update and update your car as they make it better so older models of the car can continually be made better as the software evolves. And I guess the last thing I'll mention in terms of what's next, I don't know if you've heard about it, but there's a little war developing between two very large, very large companies, a company called Amazon and a company called Google. They're actually, work, it's, it's, it's nicknamed the Robot Wars, but those two organisations are literally starting to build technologies that fully automate the last mile of delivery of products to people's doors. Right now it's a bit of a game. You've got Google with little cars driving, you know, their little street view cars are driving around Silicon Valley and the driver of the car actually sits in the car with their hands folded and the car actually navigates itself around. The idea of the person sitting there is obviously things may not always work, so they're there to take over. And I actually heard uh, Steve Wozniak, the other guy that started Oracle, actually uh, started um, App Apple, had a little joke that some of the engineers in, in Silicon Valley like to follow those cars around and uh, enact a little GPS blocker so the car doesn't know where to go anymore and you, you suddenly see the driver go to grab the wheel, right? 
But um, Google's now looking at using those cars to deliver things to people's doors. And likewise, Amazon is using uh, droid or, or robot type, uh, flying robot type technology to deliver books and other products right to people's doors. It's early days, but over the next 10 years, we'll mature that technology and it will become as commonplace as this type of technology that we have in our pockets. And the people sitting on this stage right now very, may very well be the ones that actually take us on that journey. So things have changed dramatically in the last 20 years, but I'm really excited about what's going to happen in the next 20 years and how we, how we change our life um, in so many ways. So a couple opportunities that I want to highlight to you. Number one, simplicity. Right? The biggest thing that's probably been wrong with our industries over the last 20 years is as we've been trying to grapple with all this amazing technology, um, we've also grappled with how to make it easy to use. Right? So the real opportunity in the work that you do is to work out how to take... This, these great things we've got and make them so easy that anyone can use them and consume them. Because simplicity is very important. We should never forget sustainability. You know, I was taught something very early on that we should always leave wherever we go better than what we found it. And that's true of everything that we do in technology. And that's how I see sustainability. You know, no matter how you look at sustainability, if you can look at every job or every, every interaction you've got, if you can find a way to make it better, you'll create a much more sustainable future for us. And lastly, um, the impact of globalisation and the notion of a small planet. I've worked on software projects now where people within the project team literally have no idea where anybody else are. They're just on the planet working together. We're just all connected. And it's not about countries and borders and barriers and location. We all just work together. And that's going to continue to drive change in the way that we deliver things on a global ba basis. So it's a very, very exciting time. I'm thrilled to see so many of you on the stage tonight. I'm excited about what you'll achieve over the next 10 or 20 years of your career. I hope that I can go on that journey with you. So let me close with a challenge. That's my story. And with so many opportunities ahead of us, I'm wondering what your story will be. Thank you.